All right? Should we start? Great. Uh, so good evening and welcome to this, what it will be, almost the last session of the day. Um, thank you for staying. There's probably beer outside, but you are here and I appreciate it. Um, we're going to talk about um, container life cycles with Docker. Um, the lack of them or the existence of them, are they done correctly or not? And um, that's me. My name is Baruch. I'm a developer advocate with uh, JFrog. Uh, and uh, JFrog is a startup company. We have office, the, the biggest one in Israel, um, Santa Clara, and uh, in France as well. Uh, we obsessed with frogs, as you can see here and here. We have cool t-shirts in our booth, so tomorrow uh, you're more than welcome to come and grab some. Uh, we have um, three products, uh, Artifactory, uh, Bintray, and uh, the latest edition, the Mission Control. Um, both Artifactory and Bintray um, are about managing binaries. Um, Artifactory is an artifact repository that manages binaries, including Docker images. And uh, Bintray is a distribution platform which also uh, have the ability to distribute your binaries from uh, uh, Docker images from them. And uh, so we, we have this relationship with Docker and we support their images and uh, you can actually use uh, our tools uh, in order to work with that. So, um, and, and what, I'm what I want to talk with you today is actually a promotion pipeline. And uh, we envision promotion pipeline as a pyramid which have um, this so at the bottom, you can see um, a lot of builds, right? We start at the bottom. We start usually with a lot of builds. And as we go to the up of this pyramid towards our release, we have less and less binaries. And usually the uh, quality of those binaries increase. And between those slices of the pyramid, there are the quality gates, which actually filter out the binaries which doesn't cut to this security gate. So think about integration tests, uh, think about unit tests at the bottom, and all the builds that don't pass um, unit tests actually fail on this, um, on, the, on this step, and the next one will be integration tests. And again, some uh, they are longer, and some builds pass, others don't, so we have less. And then we have stuff like stress testing, UI testing, etc., etc. They all got um, longer and longer, but they actually test less and less artifacts every time, right? I, I hope that's something that makes sense, um, and at least it should. Um, and uh, I mentioned quality gates. Um, the whole pipeline is actually built as a pipeline in which you have multiple quality gates that those artifacts pass through them, and of course, less and less. And, each and uh, on each and every step, oh, you actually can see my pointer, that's nice. So on each and every step of this pipeline, you have some kind of test, right? The test that I spoke earlier. And the visibility of each and every step is different. So for example, developers, developers see all of them. And on the other side here, it will be the customer, it will be the release repository, and here, that's the only repository that customer can see, or the user, or the deployment tool that takes your stuff to production, whatever. This is the last one. And here in the middle, we have maybe the QA test. They can see this repository and further, and maybe some automatic tests for, automatic tools for testing can see this repository and further, etc., etc. Right, again, I, I hope that makes sense. Um, that's something that we do for years. This is actually a great diagram for a relatively old book. Um, the Agile LM, um, I think it's maybe four years ago or something. And, and, and nothing changed. This is exactly the same that we are doing now. So what about Docker? The thing with Docker is the Docker build is extremely easy, powerful, and fun, right? I don't know, I, um, every time I compose a Docker file and then I run it 
uh, I enjoy it a lot because it is very easy and powerful way to construct hardware and software to isolate the software and and that's a powerful thing and of course when we use it the natural thing about it is use it more because it's easy so what we see a lot is that this promotion pipeline is implemented with docker build so we have this docker file here in the development and then we build it, we test it, we throw away the images, and we build it again in you on the next level, if the tests are passed. And if the tests are passed here, we build it again in you on the next, um, on the next gate, et cetera, et cetera. This is uh, very compelling because it's very easy, it's very simple, it's understandable, it's a no-brainer because all we need to do is build from same Docker file again. What can go wrong when you build from sources? Well, we have this discussion for years because we believe that you should promote binaries and not sources. And we are DevOps, which used to be a Java conference, uh, and um, I think that most of you still are Java developers. And, uh, and, uh, and that's the question that we hear a lot from Java developers. What's wrong with build from sources? You take your, let's say, um, Maven. So you take your POM file. It has all the dependencies listed. You need to take care of that you take the same version of Maven, the same version of Java, and you're good to go. And as we all know, we nail the dependencies with their versions, and then everything's good. And it usually works. With Dockerfile, it's even more appealing because the build is much easier. But what we learned with Docker is that not simple and cheap is not always the way to go. And that's why. Dockerfile is one of the most fragile build scripts that were ever created. Every line in the Docker file actually refers to the latest version of some dependency. Chances are that every time that you will build this Docker file, you will actually get different results. It could be because the Ubuntu latest changed, or maybe Python latest changed, or maybe Node latest changed, or maybe your app changed. All of them don't declare versions at all. This is extremely fragile. And so don't think that I made this up. This is actually uh, an example of how to build Node application with Docker. This is how they say you should do. And of course, the problem is that whatever you test in any part of your development pipeline behaves, you, you test something entirely different in the next part of your, uh, of your pipeline. And it doesn't make any sense. So, of course, when you build those pipelines, you actually should build them with immutable and stable binaries instead of building from scratch each and every time. And this is how it should look. You build your images with Docker file only once. And then you actually promote pre-built binaries through the quality gates. Right? So I hope that, hope that makes sense. And, and there are different ways to build this pipeline and different ways to visualize this pipeline. And one of them is the um, artifactory promotion that I'm going to show you um, a demo real soon. And we will talk about what we have and what we don't. But the idea is that you have some build. This is build number five. And it goes through the development. It goes to the staging and then to pre-production and then we release this build 
to production. And usually when we are talking about Docker, we release build is we are going to deploy containers of this image, or if we distribute images, we are going to send this image to distribution, right? So that's, um, that's about it. And Docker actually fights with us when we try to do that. It fights with us because of how the tag, Docker tag, is built. So what we see here is a structure of a tag. And you can see here that the registry host is actually built into the name of the artifact that you work with. More so, not only that, it's limited to host only. And we just saw that we have multiple repositories that we want to promote. Those are the repositories which are separated with the security gates. We have Docker staging local, Docker preprod local, Docker prod local. We have context after the host. So think about the host is myartifactory.com, and then it goes slash one of those. What can we do here? We cannot do that anymore because from Docker's perspective, one repository or one registry per host should be enough for everybody. Like, you know, 640K. Should be enough for everybody. Why would you want possibly to have multiple registries in one host? Doesn't make any sense. Well, it does, but we cannot do that. And there is no, there is no I would say, Decent working out through that. So we, we try our best. And how can, we, how can we have more than one repository, more than one registry per host? Well, so first of all, we can minimize the number of repositories that Docker, Docker interacts with. And we do it by using virtual repositories. Virtual repositories are aggregation of multiple repositories under the same URL, which actually can give us this um, single point of contact with the registry that we need to read and write. So we deploy to a virtual repository, which is backed up by a Docker dev, and then we promote within Artifactory itself through the different um, repositories. And if we have test tools, um, which actually means Docker clients, each and every Docker client in each and every environment will work with the URL of this repository that is exposed to um, the correct level inside the promotion pipeline. So let's say there are QA guys, and they actually need to deploy this image to their QA servers in order to check. Um, so they will interact with a concrete repository, but only with one. And then the um, end of the pipeline will be exposed through virtual repository as well and it will contain a production ready images. So let's look at the diagram. I think it will be clearer. So this is what we have. So here we have our build, being it either the developer or maybe Jenkins, that actually need the base image, right? This is how we start. We start with a from directive, which means that we need some base image. And this base image usually come, it can come from one of my internal images, and then we will use the Docker prod local a repository, physical repository that will be exposed to the developer or Jenkins. It can be one of my development images, and of course they will be resolved as well. Or it can be some canonical image from Docker Hub. It can be a, an image from um, from Bintray or from any other repository, and those are exposed as well. So the developer here can actually interact with multiple repositories by declaring a single registry as Docker insists 
by nailing you down to a single host. And then, once the image is ready, once it was pre-built, now it should be deployed. And it deployed through the same, uh, through the same registry, and that, of course, simplifies the configuration, and it actually goes to the Docker dev, to the, to the first repository in our pipeline. And then we actually start to promote this image through the quality gates. And um, we can do it by REST API, we can do it by Jenkins, but anyhow, it now starts traversing between the repositories, and if we have longer pipeline, it will go one and another and third, et cetera, et cetera, and eventually it will end up in our production repository or release repository from which it should be um, rolled out to production or distributed to the customers, and here, we will actually um, expose this Docker prod local to the customer or to the production server. So the production endpoint, either a customer or a service, will actually see only what is available from Docker prod local and from Docker Hub or any other remote repositories, okay? So that's, that's how it works, and of course, you will, see it, um, you will see a demo in a second. Before that, let's talk about um, promotion metadata. And promotion metadata is also extremely important, and we are talking, to, um, and we are talking about information what was promoted. So you look at the artifact, and you, uh, the image, and you try to understand where it came from, what build produced it, because you want to trace it back to the Docker file that created it, or what was the promotion action, from which repository to which repository it was moved. The status, of course. Was it promoted? Was it released? Was it rolled back? All this information, why it was moved from repository to repository, who did it, obviously, um, comments about the promotion, we think that it's decent quality, let's release it, or whatever, and of course, custom metadata. And custom metadata, that's, I would say, one of the most important things about the promotion, because it allows you to express additional information about the uh, images and one, why they were promoted. So, for example, list of tests that this image successfully passed, or compatibility with um, different um, tools that it should interact with, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's that's also very important, and that's an example of the JSON file that you actually issue with your promotion, and it includes all this information. It can come, again, from you doing this promotion through REST API, it can be automated and come from Jenkins, or any other build, uh, CI server, whatever you choose. And here you can see it has all the information, the status, the comment, etc., etc., and those are actually the custom properties that I mentioned, and those properties will be attached to all of the images. And I mentioned that we are talking about promoting builds instead of promoting files, and that's also a very, very important aspect of, uh, of correct promotion pipeline. Because what you're actually interested in, the level of abstraction that you care about, are builds and not particular images or particular artifacts. And that's because builds are your tool, builds are your product, your module, whatever you really care about, it consists of many files, but if you don't need to trace those files between them, it's actually much easier when you can manipulate this higher level of abstraction and talk in, uh, and talk in, in builds instead of talking in particular files. What we know for sure is that we don't know. Your builds might be completely different, and your promotion, um, promotion, 
processes might be completely different. You might want to change files on their ways. You might want to trigger additional systems. You might want to tag or branch your version control that, um, that you actually release. It can be anything, and of course, we have no idea how your mileage might vary. So, um, what would be nice is if you could actually write it. If you could have, have a hook that you can write your own promotion into and express what uh, operations should be done during this promotion. And, and actually, with Artifactory, it's very simple because we have this notion of groovy promotion plugins in which you just write the code that you want and it does exactly that. So you can do that, right? And probably Docker registry cannot. And, and that's, that's the example. Um, and you can see here that um, you have some kind of promotion and it got the build name, the build number, and boom, you can do whatever you like as long as you emit eventually a message and a status, okay? And so now I would like to show you a demo of this promotion pipeline and how it actually works. Hopefully it will work um, because with Docker you can never know. That's not the correct window, is it? That's the correct one. Okay, so I have very complicated... You don't see it, don't, do you? Oh, okay, I think I need to exit the presentation from that. Mm -hmm. And now this. Yeah, it worked. Okay, so and of course, let's make it bigger. So I have very complicated Docker build here that you can see. Serious, serious job I made here. And the thing is, it really doesn't matter. But uh, it's just some kind of a Docker file. And we are going to build it with, uh, we are going to build it with Jenkins. So here I have Jenkins. Okay. Here I have Jenkins, and I have a very complicated build in Jenkins as well. So let's see what I have. Yeah. Okay, so let's go and look at the build that I have. Okay. So I run Docker build, and I tag my the, the, the image that I'm going to create with, you remember this thing? This is the host, and this is the port, and then my busy box, that's what changed from the original busy box, and I will use build number as a version. I actually don't really care about the version at this stage, because as we mentioned, I'm going to manipulate builds and not images, so I don't care about the version of an image. So this is what I'm going to do. And then, once I create it, I'm going to push this uh, image. And when I push it, I don't need to provide any additional information because the tag already includes where it is going to be pushed. And then I'm going to express additional metadata, this metadata that I mentioned. I'm going to add two additional variables, the build name and build number to the tag inside Artifactory. So, um, let's run it and see, will it work? It should be very fast, although that's the benefit. Okay, yeah, it's done and it's ready. So now from here we can go to Artifactory and see what actually happened. Okay, so that's the build browser in Artifactory. I'll make it a little bit small. I think that's good enough. Um, and we can see the information about the build. Again, metadata, it's all about metadata. So we have the build number 18. Um, it was um, Docker pipeline number 18 built with Jenkins and it took uh, pff, almost two seconds. Uh, anonymous in Artifactory, it was admin and that's actually the link back to Jenkins. 
And for example, I can see the environment variables. So here I can see all the environment variables that were true during my build, and of course I can filter them and see um, interesting stuff here as well. Um, and uh, I also have, of course, the artifacts being deployed. So here I have my Docker Dev local, that's the busy box, and here is our a tag number 18. So you can see here all the information about it, how it was built, that's the virtualiz visualization of the Docker file. So you can see here my uh, tremendous changes that I did. So I run another command instead of the command that was run. I think that will be mine. Yeah, that will be mine. And of course, here, is, here are the metadata that I added, okay? So you can see here it's build name and then build number, which of course make it searchable as well. So now if I want to find this busy box with, uh, from build number 16, for example, I can do that as well. Build number 16 and uh, well, no artifact was found. What did I do? Oh, 18, right, yeah. How do I clear that? Uh, clear? No. Anyhow, 18 will probably found it, find it. Okay. Um, right. So uh, now let's see what happening. I have a client here, which is a production client. And this production client expects to see which artifacts do I have. So it will run something like that. Docker pool, private docker, 5000, my busy box number 18. What is this port and how it's different from the previous port? Here we used, uh, here we used another one, right? In, uh, in Jenkins, we deployed to another port. Where is my Jenkins? It was closed. Mm, let's go to builds and go back to Jenkins here. Yeah. So here, when we deployed it, it was deployed to another port. It was actually deployed to 5001. It is here. Configure. Here you go. 5001. What are those ports? Do I have multiple installations of Artifactory? How it's different? That's actually the workaround that we did around this thing of not having multiple repositories. So you remember the picture? We have two virtual repositories now, one which the development work with, to which we deploy this stuff, and the other is for production when the production client actually try to pull from. And what we do is we have an Nginx installed with Artifactory, which actually maps 5000 to the release repository and 5001 to the dev repository. So here, when we are looking at our repositories list, we can see that we have two virtual Docker repositories, Docker and, Do uh, and Docker Dev, and Docker includes only the production and the Docker Hub, and that's the one mapped to port 5000, and the other one, the Dev, includes this one, which means those two, and Dev, uh, and the dev as well. So we commit to this one and we try to fetch from this one, from the 5000. So that's why I'm running here the pool from this and I expect not to find it. Image not found. Image not found because the visibility of this port is limited to production only. So now we want to promote our we want to promote our, our, our image. And we promote it, we have a number of ways. We can use the REST API, 
or we can use um, uh, Jenkins for that, and we will do it from Jenkins. So here we have our build number 18, and we can use the promotion button to promote to release or to any other repository. And the promotion plugin that I'm going to select, that's exactly this groovy code that actually takes care of the promotion. And here I have the plugin installed that is called Promote Docker. And we can change the comment and the status, of course, and we can select the target repository. I'm selecting the Docker prod local repository, which is backed up by the Docker virtual repository that is mapped to port 5000. And now, after my promotion, I expect, of course, my client to be able to find it. So let's run this promotion. It should be very fast. And now we can see what actually happened. So going back to the list of artifacts, I have now my build number 18 in the production repository. And in my build browser, I can look at this build and see the history, because something happened to the build itself. So here we have the release history, which actually shows the step of the release with all the metadata that I provided. And now, hopefully, if everything worked well, I will be able to pull this repository. Right, it worked. So the, the, the only question is, what do I have, which is this magic that I have in the Groovy uh, script that actually triggers this promotion? And what I have there is um, actually a call for REST API that does the promotion inside Artifactory. So here I have HTTP call to Artifactory that does this promotion. And you can see here that I can do a lot in it. And um, after the promotion, I want to write this release status. So I go and I take the build and I find the release status and I append this new message that I got and et cetera, et cetera. So here, this is completely your code that you can write and do whatever, uh, whatever you like with it. And, and of course, there is a lot of room for improvement there. This is a kind of a little bit new field. Um, and uh, if you are familiar with uh, Artifactory and our promotion capabilities for other tools like Java, like .NET, um, and uh, Vagrant, and, um, and others, um, it's, um, it provides more information. For example, it for provides information about which artifacts being promoted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And those are early days, but um, and um, but you can see here what will be um, um, what will be the general direction. Another important thing is this port mapping, which of course is also very painful. But uh, here there is no um, nothing much we can do. Uh, we will of course. Uh, make this configuration as painless as possible, but you will probably always, until Docker changes something, end up with mapping different repositories to ports as counterintuitive as it might sound. And uh, um, I think that I'm done. That was a really short talk. On the other side, you have beer outside, so that's probably good. And if you have any questions, I will be more than happy to answer. Yeah? No? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually that's actually a good question. And um, so I have a slide that presented the build uh, build file, which is full of latest <laughs> versions. And and people go like, okay, you want to bash uh, a Docker, so you display this slide. Actually, no one uses it. No, that's okay. That's 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 totally fair, 
right? And, and part of it might be with versions, other might be the latest, or a good configuration management can say, you know what, I will do it all with versions. But the interesting part in Docker is that versions are not final. Think about Ubuntu, for example. Let's say I put here a version. What is the latest version? It's like 14.10 or something, right? 15.10? 15.10. Um, can you say that version Ubuntu 15.10 is something final? Is it final? What do you say? No, you have the security patches. I have the security patches all the time, and they all go into 15.10. Into so even if I name a version here, that version still doesn't mean that this um, um, that this binary that I rely on heavily, that's my baseline, is actually something stable. Okay? Of course, I took the most ridiculous example because that was the, the, the easiest way to pass my message. But even if you try to do it correctly with Docker, you will fail because of the type of the binaries that you rely here. Right? That answers your question? OK. And um, you know what? Trust me, there is no way you can run the same build again in almost any technology, really almost any technology, and be 100% sure that you will eventually end up with the, same, um, with the same software. And I can go with you one by one through Maven, .NET, Python, Ruby, um, whatever you like. And there is always something which is not stable enough, which is fragile, and you might hit it and you might not hit it, but you cannot rely on that. And here with Docker, that's like absolutely bold that you cannot rely on rebuilding from source every time. Anything else? Yes. Well, that's a very good question, and, and the answer is, well, we don't know. Um, what we know is that they, of course, try to improve their um, uh, registry and the trusted registry and Docker Hub, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, until this problem of um, a tag which is uh, hard-coded with one single host is solved, I don't see how it's possible to build a good promotion pipeline without those tricks that we did with, uh, with the ports. And we do those tricks because we don't have other choice, but they do. So probably a good, um, um, I would say, uh, a good sign that something is coming will be when we will see that the host of the resolution is detached from the software itself, like we have in any other system, right? Think about it. <laughs> any other system, we have some configuration file that manages the repositories or the sources of, of, of the binaries and the binary name and version is something else. That's really unusual and pretty weird, I would say. All right? So you got, what, like 20 minutes extra time for beer? I hope you liked it. Thank you very much. <laughs>